Mark, chapter 8, 34 through 37. Then he called the crowd to him. Uh, I guess I'm going to read over. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can a man give in return for his soul? Third John, verses 2 through 4. Third John's a very short book, only one chapter. Dear friend, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. It may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. I'm sure when you heard that I was going to be talking about soul care, you thought, oh boy, here we go. She gets up at 5.30 in the morning and prays for three hours before it hits 6.30. <laughs> or maybe you thought, well, she's going to be talking about how a chapter a day will keep the devil away. <laughs> nope, uh, that's sure way for us all to tune out those guilt trips that we've all heard, they're just not a part of my thought. Because you see, all of those guilt trips like that, where we get up at 5.30 and pray for three hours before 6.30, or have to read a chapter a day to keep the devil away, that's all about works, isn't it? That's all about a list of things that we check off, just like we checked off this morning, washing our face and brushing our teeth and doing all of those things to get ready. But we have not so learned Christ, for we walk, how? By faith, not by sight. We are not saved by our works, we are saved by grace. And you know what? It's a lot easier to live with law than it is with grace. Because law says, do this and do this and do this, and you'll make it. But grace, that's a little harder. Because it doesn't tell us what to do, we have to listen. We have to listen to our heart. We have to listen to our soul. Now, how does our soul get along well? How, do, how are we able to sing, it is well with my soul? Well, fast food is very much a part of our landscape here, isn't it? We all have our favorites. Now, I stopped eating at McDonald's a long time ago. But every once in a while, those french fries, call to me <laughs> and every March you will see me pull through a drive through at least once for a shamrock shake. <laughs> I know those aren't good for me and I know what is and but you know so much of the American diet is what is easy, what is convenient and what is cheap. Healthy eating takes a lot more time, doesn't it? Healthy eating takes a lot more thought. Healthy eating takes a lot more preparation. But you didn't hear, come here today to hear me talk about food. 
But that does lead me to another interaction that I had recently that was all about soul care and how, how much of what, we, what passes today for soul care is a lot like fast food. It'll keep us alive, but it's not really good for us. It has some nutrition, but it's not really good as a steady diet. And yet it's how so many of us care for our souls. So what are you feeding your soul? How much exercise is your soul getting? How are you caring for your soul? You see, we have no problem seeing ourselves as different parts, do we? One is our physical life. How many of us took our various pills this morning? How many of us, however, do the diet and eat and exercise and brush and floss like the dental hygienist told us to? And, oh, well, we don't take care of this body half as well as we know how, do we? But even at that, we're constantly feeding it or washing it or in some way taking care of the physical, even if not as well as we might. Another part would be care of relationships. We spend a lot of time on that, too, sometimes, don't we? We chuckle when we see a fellow walking into a florist shop or walking out with a great big bouquet, and we nudge each other and say, I wonder what he did. <laughs> Maybe we judge the seriousness of the relationship problem by how big that bouquet is. Or maybe it's that we lie awake at night rehearsing somebody else's wrong that broke a relationship or trying to figure out how we can restore a relationship that we broke. Bottom line, we spend a lot of time taking care of relationships. And we take care of our emotional needs, some of us better than others. We cry at sad movies. Sometimes we don't cry when we should because somewhere along the way we learn that Making a scene was wrong. And many of us have paid a very high price for not taking care of our emotional needs. As we deal now with explosive anger, or anxiety, or some other emotional difficulty. But care of the soul? Well, I go to church once a week. Isn't that enough? Uh, that is, unless we have visitors or any of the other reasons you give yourself for staying home. Isn't that enough? Well, honestly, it's pretty much the equivalent of a McDonald's diet. Yes, I know, Tim is amazing. And you can live on it for a while, but it's not the best care of your soul. Because care of the soul involves a lot more than just doing something. We love the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Many of you probably know the story behind that. The person that wrote it, wrote it as the ship he was on, passed over the place where his four daughters had been lost in a tragedy at sea. Only his wife had been saved. When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. But I found another verse that I didn't know about when I was researching this sermon. For me be it Christ, be it Christ hence to live, if Jordan above me shall roll, no pang shall be mine, for in death, as in life, thou wilt whisper thy peace to my soul. What does it take to have that kind of confidence? What does it take to have the Apostle John say that he wishes your physical health might be as good as your spiritual health? When for most of us, our bodies, I fear, are a lot healthier than our souls. Now, there are a lot of elements of soul care. There are a lot of principles, and each one could be a series of messages. 
But I want to talk today about the basic building block of soul care. And that is knowing who we are. We often say that we have a soul. Now, in a quote often, at, often given to C.S. Lewis, but probably from George MacDonald, he says it is more correct to say, I am a soul, I have a body. I am a soul, I have a body. So beginning in Genesis, when God breathed life into humanity, and we became not a living body, but a living soul, God saw that it was very good. And the rest of scripture tells us over and over again how much we are loved and how much we are valued. We continue to mess up. We continue to get ourselves in some awful predicaments. Sometimes even our best attempts at caring for one another it turns inside out and upside down, doesn't it? Causes more problems than it solves sometimes. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we kill, we gossip, we covet. And we tell ourselves, and we have for generations, that we are progressing towards peace. And yet, we look at our world and there's even more violence in it now than before. And yet, and yet our Lord continues to love us just as we are, just where we are, to value us, to take care of us, because we're worth it. We're worth all the trouble. One of the things that we wouldn't ever tell our kids, so kids don't listen now, is that they can't do anything that will make us quit loving them. We may not like what they do, but there's nothing they can do that would ever make us quit loving them. It's hard for us to embrace and internalize the truth, though, that God is crazy about us. God is crazy about you. He loves you. He adores you. If we were in charge, we'd have thrown up our hands and done a, done a repeat of Noah, Noah and the ark, wouldn't we? But God is not. He loved us so much that he came to us as one of us. He walked among us, and most of all, he loved us. And he loved us enough to be obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. He loved and he valued us that much. But in a world where the message that is shouted so loudly, the message that is shouted at football games and halftime shows, at beauty contests for toddlers, shouted at the clothes for children that scream of adult themes, the only thing that matters is your body. It's hard to hear anything else, isn't it? It's hard to hear anything else but the judgment that we receive when we look at billboards and see that we do not measure up. We look at the internet, we look at magazines, and then we look in the mirror and we say, I don't measure up. We look at the people we regard as beautiful, and then we look at our lives and say, I don't matter. I'm nothing. I'm from Hot Springs. Hot Springs can look at whitefish and say, we don't matter. But you know, how then do we secure our identity? Identity theft is very real, isn't it? We care for our physical identity by holding on to those credit cards and being careful where our information is. And it's the same with our souls. Four steps, not a checklist. 
because that first step is to know the source of my identity. I look in the mirror and see my parents very clearly. For Father's Day, I put up a picture of me with my father taken a few years ago while he was still, still living. And several people said, Risa, you look so much like your dad. Which is funny, for Mother's Day, I put up one of, of my mother. And everybody said, oh, Risa, you look so much like your mom. I open my mouth, and my mother comes out. Any of you ever have, have that happen? Even as those things secure my identity and my family of origin, so I need to know the source of my soul's identity. I need to know that the God of the universe sings over me. I need to know that I am loved not because I am a human doing, not because I have done this or done that, but just because I am a human being. I need to realize in the deepest part of my being not a gospel of books and sermons and beliefs, but an intimate reality of grace. And grace alone, the books and the sermons and all those other things flow out from this source of my identity. They do not anchor who I am. I am honored and valued. We are honored and valued by the God of the universe. I am the beloved. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Another old one, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Vile I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. As I told the children, the deepest theological truth I know, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. So after the source of my identity, I need to be aware of what the manual says. Now, the pandemic pushed us into a lot of technological learning that we weren't exactly ready for, right? I can say Zoom now, and it doesn't mean drag race, does it? Bluetooth, we all knew about it, but it took on some new meanings. It takes a while to operate in that world with confidence. I remember I got a new system, a new system for the church, sound system, because our analog wasn't working well with the phone that I was doing the Facebook Live and YouTube on. And every week, I had to get out the manual. Every week on my iPhone, I had to try a couple of times to make sure that when it went up on YouTube, I wouldn't be preaching on my side. Right? Even so, soul care means that we need to renew and be renewed in our minds. Paul expresses it in Ephesians 4, to put off the old and put on the new, but this happens as our mind is renewed. Now, how is our mind renewed? Well, there are a bunch of disciplines, and remember that no discipline for the moment seems pleasant, but afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those of us that are willing to be exercised by it. You like exercise? When you first start, do you? 
here this, this week, I ended up cleaning out one of the freezers at the food bank in Hot Springs. It was a lot of upping and downing, and we don't have a drain down there, so there was water to be carried and all of those things. What did I learn the next day? <laughs> exactly. I had muscles that I didn't know I had. It's the same with these things. The inward disciplines, meditation, prayer, fasting, study. The outward disciplines, simplicity, solitude, submission, service. The corporate disciplines, confession, worship, guidance, celebration. Don't worry about that list. It's in a lot of places. Instead, think about exercise and which one your soul needs. Because these are a response to being the beloved, not the way to become the beloved. All those messages that we tuned out of all the things that we needed to do It's okay if they're a response to a loving God, not an attempt to secure the love that we already have. I love watching the kids. You all can't see it. But it is so obvious to me that these children know they are loved from their comfort level here. And we our children too, because third, we secure our identity by being part of a community. Now this is a little counterintuitive because if we're part of a community, we get hurt sometimes, don't we? And we hurt others sometimes too. But it is in community, in the relationships that we form with each other in the body of Christ, that we can find two things. We can find people who know us and people who will love us without judgment. People who will tell us where they see Jesus in us and people who will encourage us as well. The body of Christ the community of believers has always had as a part of its purpose the Barnabas, the encourager, to hold each other accountable, but also to support and encourage one another. We need each other. That's one of the reasons the pandemic was so hard on us, was because we couldn't gather. We had phone and we had Zoom, but it wasn't the same, was it? And fourth, we secure our identity in Christ by remembering, remembering how God has worked in the past. Those of us with hair the color of mine have walked a long way, haven't we? And we remember. We remember the altars, we remember the places, we remember the times when God reached into our lives. That's the fourth way that we take care of our souls, is by being encouraged through those stories and through those times. Now, the problem with being up on top of the mountain here is that you can't stay up there, can you? You end up coming down. Sometimes you come down and it's a lot of fun. Sometimes you come down and things don't go exactly according to plan, right? You get down to the bottom and there's a problem. Or you go home and find out that the sink's leaking. Or 
the heat went out. Whatever. You all know what your problems are. I don't. We don't live on top of the mountain. But remembering how God has worked in our own lives by telling ourselves our own story, listening to ourselves as we tell that story to others. I bet you you're pretty good at reminding Tim of things he's told you in the past when he needs to hear it. The reason why I know that is because every church that I've been a part of has been very good at telling me things that I've told them when I need to hear it. I've said something that was a God moment in someone's life, and then they turn around and tell me when I need that same comfort or that same counsel. Israel was forever building piles of stones to remember. And it's good for us to remember also. So soul care, it's not about reading a chapter a day. It's not about praying for three hours. It's about grace. And it's about the grace that you need. I don't know where that is. Maybe it's in knowing the source of your identity, knowing that Jesus loves you. Even if you have absolutely blown it, that God still sings over you and loves you just as you are, just where you are. Second, being aware of what Scripture says about me Third, being part of an encouraging community. And fourth, remembering where God has touched my life in the past. That's what soul care is. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's not a list of you have to, you should. It's not a list of shoulds and oughts. It's a list of love and grace from God the Father to your heart. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that you would unlock my heart that I might be fully alive to my true identity. Give me, Lord, clear revelation to see myself the way you see me. Help me to stand in your truth against all enemy attacks and guard my heart. Help me to identify the lies. Help me to re to know the, any places where I am chained to my past. I repent of those lies of the past. For teach me, Lord, to hear your voice and not believe the enemy's lies about who I am. I thank you that I am unique and that I am made in your image. I want to understand and feel the deep things in your heart for me. For I choose to believe the truth about how you see me. I thank you that I can hope in the future and believe in the good destiny that you have for me. I want to know you and I don't want anything to hinder my relationship with you, Lord. I thank you that I am your child. I have been justified. I am your friend. I am a member of your body. I am a citizen of heaven. 
I am blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. And I am chosen in you before the foundation of the world. I am forgiven. I am adopted as your child. I am a new creation. I am the righteousness of God, and I am safe. I am part of your kingdom. I have your power, and I am victorious in you. Thank you for this new identity I have in you. May I live out this truth in my life. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.